Hello friends, myself Dr. Anita Singh, Assistant Professor History and today I am going to deliver a lecture on the emergence of Indian nationalism. Nationalism, this one word, binds a huge landmass, a nation comes into being, but this word is not to be seen. So let's trace the history of modern Indian nationalism. Nationalism is a unifying force which binds the people of different caste, language, sect, creed, region into one nation. People are bound together with common interest of economics, politics and geography. In the mid of 19th century, there was a full flowering of Indian nationalism that had come into being. But very interestingly, there are different perceptions about the emergence of Indian nationalism. There is one British perception, their viewpoint is there, which talks about that there is no nationalism or rather there is artificial nationalism in India. John Strachey, a British scholar, had remarked in 1884 that the first and the most essential thing to learn about India is that there is not and there never was an India and there would never be an India in future. And the people who held this kind of opinion, among them, John Strachey was no exception. There was other class of British scholars who believed that the Indian nationalism was a result, was an outcome of British domination, British Raj. They hold a different view than John Strachey and they believe that it could come into being, India could come into formation just because of British rule. It was because of British common institution, their common taxation system, their common institutions, laws, administration, it was all because of their common system that they had provided that India could come into, into making of a one nation. There is a British scholar who said that it was because of one common taxation system that the people of ages who were always different had come under one single system, state system. So British people hold a very colonial point of view about Indian nationalism. They believe that it was because of their modern means of communication, that is railways, postage, telegraph, that India could be united into one nation. It was because of these means of communication that the leaders like Ishwar Chand Vidyasagar from Calcutta, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan from Aligarh could become national leaders of India. So, friends, do we support this kind of view? On very contrary to this, there is an Indian perception of Indian nationalism. The Indian scholars hold a different view to this British opinion. Indian historians have remarked that Indian nationalism was never artificial or superficial. The coming of Indian nationalism was a very natural and gradual process. The web of Indian life woven into interlockingly diverse and different patterns were not rigid and exclusive to each other. Although there was not a nation in 19th century, but there was some essential basic features of nationalism present in India which came into a bond and India was in the formation of making. If we take the European model of nationalism, then of course India was not a nation in 19th century. Because Indian nationalism does not come in, does not fit into that European model of nationalism. Because for them, nationalism is basically on the basis of four parameters. That is common territory, common people, common language and common history. So India was never a nation on this pattern. But India always had the essential 
elements of nationalism and despite the diversity of language caste creed religion sect region india had all the essential elements of becoming a nation and that is the reason that india came into being in the mid of 19th century so let's trace the causes for the emergence of indian nationalism friends when we are discussing the emergence of indian nationalism we ought to discuss the causes for the emergence of indian nationalism and we when we discuss the causes we we are bound to start with the foreign domination it was the foreign rule in india which brought the diverse sects of people of india to one common platform it was the outcome of british oppression suppression that india started coming in started becoming a nation it was the british rule the oppressive british rule in india which forced the people from north to south from east to west to develop with a common method of opposition to british suppression then we have another cause that is the political and administrative unification of india it was in 19th century that india started un getting unified administratively this was the over centralized administration of british that brought the indian people under one system and because of which there was because of one institution there because of one common law because of one taxation system because of this common uniform pattern of administration the diverse people of india from different sects and religion had started unifying themselves on a common platform to fight against britishers this also was the indian nationalism was enhanced the process the formation of india into making was enhanced because of the role of press this was the real fourth state of our freedom struggle and especially the coming of vernacular press there was a time it was post 1857 revolt era when we see a sudden increase in vernacular press there was literature coming out in different regional languages which ha which had a common access to the downtrodden the rural areas of our country and the voice of this press was reaching to the common masses and the oppression of britishers was vocally criticized in vernacular literature this was a very profound voice which unified india into a nation then the coming of western education in india there was a section of vilayati returned sons of soils who had english as their lingua franca and when they were deprived of their post their required positions in british bureaucracy they all turned to be a nationalist we can take the example of sn benerji orbindo ghosh manmohan ghosh and all these people had with their liberal thinking and scientific outlook they had started criticizing british policies their imperial policies were openly criticized criticized by these western educated people the university education was also quite helpful in bringing this nationalism in india because the university educated indians had this voice to speak about the oppression of the britishers in india the economic exploitation was another cause which brought india into a nation in fact the first reaction to british imperial oppression was the economic critique of british policies the oppressive agrarian system the severe famines that were coming in in 19th century the oppressive taxation system all these things had brought this fact 
to clarity that the British interest and the Indian interest are not common. That they are the oppressors and we are being oppressed. So this economic exploitation was one big reason which brought the Indian nationalism into a reality. Other than this, we see the social reasons equally responsible for coming of the nationalism in India. The education had brought a landmark change in India. There was a cultural revi revivalism in India. We had great leaders, social reformers in India, who had again infused a spirit of nationalism among the people of India. Their lost self-esteem and self-confidence was regained by their preachings. I must quote the father of modern India, Raja Ram Mohan Roy. I must quote Ishwar Chand Vidya Sagar. Dayanand Saraswati Ji, with his slogans about India for Indians, go back to Vedas, and his emphasis on Swadeshi was the reason for bringing the self-confidence of Indians back. His emphasis on freedom and fearlessness was the political force behind this nationalism. He always emphasized about the rich cultural heritage of India and that India should always, Indians should always be proud of their rich cultural heritage. Even Ramakrishna Mission movement was also quite helpful. It helped the Indians to regain their belief, their confidence in their early history and their customs and traditions. This was a just answer to the racial arrogance of Britishers. Britishers always believed in the theory of white man's burden, which means that the white race people are superior to the non-whites and the God have sent them to civilize the non-whites. And all the oppressions were done in India in the name of this theory of white man. John Stuart Mill, one great scholar, British scholar, was of the opinion, he strongly opposed that there was ever a strong, highly civilized country like India. He never believed in Indian, the sophistication of Indian civilization. Hastings has regarded that the Britishers regard the Hindus as barbarians and they treat them as dogs. So this cultural revivalism was very helpful for the Indians to regain their confidence in their culture and history. Along with this, we see this social movement and economic movement was further strengthened by the coming of vernacular literature. There was a sudden increase in vernacular literature in the second half of 19th century. We see literature coming in Bengali. We see literature coming in Urdu. We see literature coming in Hindi and in all the southern parts of India. And in these literatures, the British policies were openly criticized and this, could, this had easy access to the common people of India. We also see that the Indian nationalism could become a reality because of the coming of the impact of European movement in India. The Indian educated people, when they came in contact with the European literature, they were influenced by the Mezzanese Young the Carbonary Incident, Garibaldi's movement had a great impact on Indian psyche, on the Indian youth psyche. And the Indian youth had started the similar kind of movements in India against British oppression. We see that the late 19th century witnesses the coming of different political associations in India. How people of different regions in India are now organizing themselves 
to form to have a common platform to react against britishers and this gradually had given birth to indian national congress some imperial reactions like we have of lord curzon who believed that there is no nation like india and he wanted to curtail this uprising of national movement by the bengal partition of 1905 but to his surprise and to the entire european psyche's surprise we see that the partition of bengal had reaction from across the country although it was a partition of bengal but the reactions to this partition was coming from different regions of india which means that india was there and the more they were trying to suppress this national movement this national consciousness this national patriotism the more it was gaining momentum the racial arrogance was no more tolerated in india and that is the reason that ilbert bill controversy was severely criticized in india and which forced the britishers to review it the revolt of 1857 was again an alarming situation for britishers because hitherto they were believing that there is no india and this scattered society of divisions can never become an india but the revolt of 1857 was a surprising situation where they had to admit that although there is not a nation right now but the nation is 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 in a process of becoming a great nation nationalism in india in the european connotation was although not there but i would like to put forward a very indian perception of nationalism nationalism should be inclusive in its nature and indian history is always witness of this kind of inclusive nationalism indian nationalism was always there since the ages the india was there but it was not in the strict compartment in a suffocating environment of the of a defined parameter it was very flexible it was very inclusive and it was a nationalism which always had a feature of adaptation amalgamation of incorporating the different people into its nationhood and this is the reason india is a diverse society with different people different language different caste sect creed but india is one nation and its nationhood is becoming stronger day by day this is one reason that we see that the country with such huge differences of physical features climate culture food customs and manners their dressing sense is one nation and it is the largest democracy of the world and it is a lesson to the world that the nationalism should be more open more inclusive and more adaptive than the european model of nationalism which has always brought divisions it has demarcated people it has divided people and the world is bleeding till now so friends let's discuss nationalism further in future with a broad mind with a open perception so that there is a world peace and we all could live happily thank you